Can I ask you a personal question? Do you talk about dying? About death? How does it feel? How do you, what's going through you when I'm mentioning these words? I don't know what age you are, but I am 71 and I'm getting on with it. And recently, I've been thinking a lot about that. That's why today I want to tell you a good story about dying. Good? Dying? How is that possible? It is. And I would like you to meet Toos, a very remarkable woman from Holland. She was 99 years of age when she made a big decision. She decided that she wanted to die on her own terms, in dignity, still very capable, at home and surrounded by her family. Wouldn't you wish that for you? And for your loved ones? I certainly would. So what kind of woman was she, this Toes? Well, she was warm, intelligent, vibrant. She loved to talk about everything to everybody. You would have liked her, I think. We shared a passion and a love for music and for singing. She was Catholic, she went to church, and she sang in her local church choir. I admired her sense of style. She always wore colorful dresses, silk scarves, lovely silk stockings. That's how she always dressed, to perfection her hair done, her nails. That was very special about her. We had a little tradition between us that every time I come to visit her, I bring her a box of chocolates. You know, the ones you buy in the airport, the butler ones. And when I see her again, she tell me every time how much she enjoyed them, that she ate them one by one one every night, just the way she savored her life. But she was getting frail and tired at times. She said, oh, I don't know if I want to live much longer. But yet there were great highlights every year for her. And they were big family gatherings. At that stage, there were about 33 of us, 35. Her children were there, her grandchildren, even her great-grandchildren were there. So we held these big family gatherings twice a year, once on her birthday and once just after Christmas. I remember the last one very well. It was on Stevens's day. She was at her best, like always. She was very elegant eloquent, she chatted with everybody, but yet you could see that she was getting very frail and vulnerable. At times she dozed off and then she chatted again with people. So we were all waiting for that special moment that she'd open her handbag and she pulled out her piece of paper with handwritten notes. We were all expecting her beautiful speech, and she did. She opened her, opened her talk by saying, oh, it's lovely we're all here together again. And then she said, I'm sorry if I forgot any of your birthdays. Imagine that. She ended her speech that day to say, I'll see you again next year. Next year came, it's now 2020. 
She was beginning to feel very, very tired. At times she was miserable, didn't want to live anymore. She had enough. And then one day she fell again. This time she broke her shoulder and she had to be brought to hospital and then into a nursing home. And oh my God, she hated that. She wanted to go back home. So she asked her doctor who knew her very well. She asked him, will you help me to let me go? And he said, yes, I will. Because there was very little he could do for her at this stage. So you tell me if you see someone suffering that much, wouldn't you want to let them go? That reassured her that her doctor had agreed. And she started planning her last journey. Like always, she organized everything down to perfection. What she was going to wear, who was going to be there, what kind of music for her funeral, all her finances were in order, who would get what after she had died. She even set her date herself and the time. It was the 7th of April. So what happened on that day? I couldn't be there in person, but we, all her grandchildren all over the world, we gathered around her as it were. We lit our candles and we were there with her that day. So in her apartment, her immediate family got together. They laughed, they joked. She said her last speech, which she was so good at. Then they helped her to lay down on her bed. And she said goodbye to each one of them. At three o'clock on the dot, just the way she liked it, in time, her doctor arrived. And he asked her for the last time, are you sure you want to do this? She said, yes, I do. So the family sat around her. They held each other's hands and they held her hand. And the last word she spoke was, I'm so grateful, doctor, that you helped me to end my life. She died the same way as she has always lived, with quality, with dignity, with grace and with style. Like her son said, she lived like a lady and she died like a queen. Wouldn't you want that for all of us? Thank you. Thank you.